conscious perception, and still to this day, neuroscience is no closer to explaining why we see the proverbial orange rose. You know? Well, they won't, because they're looking at it. They're coming at it from the wrong angle. Yeah, we can we can they're analyze looking. how the brain, uh, you know, how the light from this enters the eye and is processed in the brain, mm. and what bits of the brain will fire when we see this. Yeah. But the brain does not contain a picture of this. No, no, no. But you and I see a picture. Yeah. So how is that picture recreated? You see, with the television, you know, if we go back to the video camera, it stores the information on a, a memory, on a hard disk, mm. say. That hard disk you know, information can be put onto a screen where it's decoded and created. A picture is recreated. But the television itself doesn't see the picture. It doesn't care two hoots. No, absolutely. That, that but, they, is, they, but the reason it is de it is being put onto a screen is because the machine, the machinery of the video camera, of the processor, of the screen are trying to communicate with an outside entity. Yeah. Well, and is that's, it an outside uh, well, entity? That, no, yeah. but that, that's exactly what is happening. Huh. That is why the conscious entity, the atma, it needs the process of the eyes, the brain, and the decoding that happens within the screen of the mind in order to project a picture which then the atma can see. Well, that's interesting because, you know, I, I think there's a lot we, more to this. <laughs> Hang on a second. I mean, there was a, there's a fascinating, I was watching the other day, a fascinating, I think I told you this, um, video on YouTube about the, the birth sequence from, from, well, actually the gestation period from naught to nine months. And then they showed the sort of baby progressing, obviously, in a shortened period. And, they, and they, they were saying, and I don't know if it's true or not, but let's assume that it is, that the baby could actually see before it had eyes. Now, yes. You know, because it was... But that is going back, I think, to your electromagnetic impulses and the it's presumably that electromagnetic connection that, that creates that. But going back to the television, isn't it the case... Isn't the television in a sense, a, a perfect metaphor for how we operate. Well, it's a, I think it's a, and that's why I just used it. I, I it think is, it's, isn't it's a reasonable, it? Because what but, you have, you point, have a signal coming from somewhere, right? Yeah. And, and, and it won't be the brain, because, I mean, just bear, out, bear with me a minute. The signal will come from somewhere. It'll go into the receiving mechanism of the television, which I would say, in human terms, is the brain. The brain will then, as you say, decode it and then create a picture from that. But the original signal, right, where does that come from? I would say, and I'm sure you would say too, from, from our consciousness. But that isn't the mind, is it? No, that I, isn't the mind. So where does the mind fit in? The mind is the bridge between the brain and the conscious person. Mind is not a conscious energy. It's... Um, but isn't the mind just a storage? It's basically a subtle storage yeah. of pictures and impressions yeah but feelings the, emotions yeah. everything yeah so somehow it's but it is not a physical sure. thing like the brain no. but it's the overlay of the brain which actually extracts and uh, interprets mm. the uh, the electrochemical understand uh, things that are happening in the brain are then they leave impressions which and actually there's several overlays here the electrical impressions of the brain leave its imprint in a kind of memory field, back to Sheldrake's. Mm. People have different names for it. Memory field is not a bad mm. kind of concept. Well, say it'd be so an energy field. It, it's an energy field, yeah. but we're calling it a memory field because it's recording what's happening within the physical. Mm -hmm. So the brain waves leave their imprint in the memory field. Mind reads the memory field. The and mind reads it, the not mind, the brain. The, yeah, no, no, no. The, the, the brain is creating imprints in the memory field. Mm. And the mind is reading the memory field. Above that, there is buddhi, which um, sometimes is translated as intelligence, but it's kind of discriminating intelligence rather than IQ. Or, and that is extracting the, the thoughts and ideas and impressions which are then in the, in the pool of the mind and casting them on the screen of the television mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the outside observer, mm -hmm. i.e. the atom, which is the actual conscious entity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to observe. Mm -hmm. And that's the process by which we observe the material world. From, mm -hmm. as, as we, as a spiritual sure being, <coughs> view the material world. 
still not quite sure about how the mind fits in. Imagine an impulse coming in and coming in again. I'm sorry, the language is but not. Does it always work. come in through the brain, or can it come well, directly into the mind? There are there are two ways of looking at this, right? One way is look. Let's look at it in the complete whole picture, right? In in a situation of oneness, right? We're all connected. We're all one. So that every every vibration, every impulse is part of us already, and is part of the whole. So in other words. There's this sort of complete togetherness. So we are connected to every impulse, every, every electromagnetic wave, whatever it is, well, that ever was and ever will be. Well, we, okay? we can be. Obviously, in our day-to-day -day life, we are not consciously connected to everything. We're much more con connected to some things rather than well, other things. Yeah, I, w I would but, say the part, because the, the reason for that is because we are... <laughs> you know, it's Operating like we, and localized. Well, yeah, we, we, that's been conditioned out of us. I mean, I think hmm. at a very early stage, you know, of childhood, we probably did have that connection. You know, and it's like it doesn't fit in to how we operate. You know, as as a society, well, as, I, a, as a. Um, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, when I say no doubt, in <laughs> <laughs> there's always doubt. <laughs> um, from my point of view, it, it seems that there is a fair bit of evidence, let's put it that way. That very, very well put, Martin. <laughs> that we are, -lawyer, we are certainly know. able to receive information from sources which comes to us, but not through the facility of our senses. Yes. Um, obviously, we have the five main kind of what are called in the Vedas, knowledge acquiring senses eyes, ears, nose, touch and uh, taste. Um, but we also do seem to gain ideas and inspiration and knowledge through a, almost a direct route fed straight, not into the brain necessarily, but I think into the, the pool of the mind, you know, and we can actually receive that. And, you know, we've talked about it in previous mm, times about mm, the remote mm. viewing, because that's exactly yeah, what yeah, yeah. I think the, the, the mind is doing there. It's been allowed to access yeah. what's happening in the memory field somewhere beyond the reach of our senses mm, mm. and we can actually tap in and actually read oh I can understand what's happening I can receive information on that yeah. and I think that happens to a lot I think it happens to children quite a bit mm -hmm. but I think it happens to people when they're in the zone mm, oh, you know? absolutely yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I mean you know you gotta be very careful because you're analyzing well, what other people are tapping into but, you know, there's the stories, for instance, of Mozart. Um, when he would hear music, he wouldn't hear it, uh, you, know, you know, he wouldn't hear it kind of note after note. He said he would hear it in its entirety. The whole thing would come to him as a complete composed thing. And he'd hear it like that. So, you know, it's, I don't want to kind of make it seem as if I'm uh, downgrading his musical brilliance by saying you know somehow or other he's tapped into something but that is his brilliance you and know? That, that is brilliant because that actually ties in perfectly with a manifestation process that i've been working on uh -huh. which i'll come on to